Yeah, I think uh, I think being an artist is uh, uh, well for me anyway. It's all about getting stuff out there, making things, and sticking it out into the world. And in some senses, it's a bit like uh, you know, you're kind of. Um, and I'll try not to be this person, but uh, kind of publicist trying to push things out there and splurge things out so it's going that way. Whereas I think being an archivist is uh, there's an element in which you're going that way. <laughs> you're looking into the looking into the past, looking at what other people like Epstein have pushed out that way. But then you're sort of looking back and researching that way. And that's something that I've always resisted as an artist because I always want I've always full of things that I want to do. And, uh, and I want to push it forward. I know lots of artists certainly have been about, uh, you know, you have to make work about something. And quite often a lot of the things that I make work about are quite selfishly uh, things about uh, things that have just occurred to me really, or they're about politics. And uh, what's been fascinating about doing this project is that it's been, it's forced me to look backwards at the art of the past and to think about and the history and the context of the past and think about how that can be the source of something to make art from. And that's been a revelation to me because that, that's something that I would never have done had I not done been involved in this new ways of curating project. And one of the um a very pleasant surprise and certainly an unexpected outcome. This was something that I never would have expected to have happened before and it's very interesting from the collaborative aspect of it, of the project, that the short films that we made. Um, before starting this I'd never, uh, I've never even held a, a camera before, certainly never edited a film and this was something that started very quickly. It was uh, one of the first uh, short residency periods in September, October 2009, so just after we'd started, that this film element came out and I think the first film that we did was uh, we'd come across, again this is just how, this is a bit of a good example of how all these things kind of happened, we would just be rooting through the archive and we came across one thing and then you can kind of, uh, you can see that, that the seed has been planted in Bob's head and he's thinking like something can come of this. Um, so we found this diary uh, which said, uh, if lost, please return to Lady Epstein. And I think both of us found the quite uh, needlessly grandiose uh, uh, use of our own title in a tiny little diary about that big to be quite amusing. So that we just uh, decided to make a film of Lady Epstein kind of stumbling around Walsall, dropping all of her belongings and uh, Bob <laughs> Bob dressed up. Bob dressed up as uh, uh, Lady Epstein, um, and considering uh, I'd only just met him, this seemed quite. It seemed quite a natural and normal thing to be doing, and it was fine and it made sense. And I think that that was just that set the tone for the rest of the project. That there was always going to be this light-hearted element to it, which I think kind of brings people in, and. Um, yeah, it kind of makes people feel at ease. And then, like, once people are, you know, comfortable, you can kind of bring out the um, the the more serious element to the archive, of which there is there's a strong um, undercurrent of quite tragic and uh, important themes that come out of it. And I think that's uh, that has been one of the most successful ways that um, that this collaborative element of it. Has, uh, has played played out. Yeah, one of the things that we've done through through working with Neil really Neil Lebeter is that uh, we've um, in every residency re residency that we've done we've made a series of YouTube films and those have delved into different aspects about Epstein, different things which relate to the um, uh, 
the documents which are in the archive, different stories really. I mean, my job I think really has been to pull stories out of uh, the archive and make those uh, somehow tangible. And uh, that's been very exciting. And and so this idea of um, of a kind of uh, um, a sort of historical dialogue, and it's related very specifically to each one. So in the in the May residency that we did, I was making this big panel, this huge panel of interpretation about uh, Esther and the Esther sculpture. So this is new ways of curating. This is. <laughs> My work, the archive. And then, uh, and then we did a res residency where I painted the, uh, the Epidaddy battle bot. I actually made that in Ramsgate and Neil came and we made a film about collecting that and taking it to, uh, bringing it to Warsaw. And then I painted it, I finished it basically in the gallery. And uh, during that process, what, one of the amazing things about it is that kids have been, uh, when we've wanted to film or uh, look at something in the gallery, the gallery's always jammed with uh, school children. <laughs> A bit like an Italian, or Italian gallery. And, that's, uh, that, and so little children staring in while I've been making things in the artist studio, that's also been another aspect of it. And as a child who has taken to see art, uh, as a, as a kid, I really think that's an important thing. One of my, definitely one of my favourite films and one of the uh, one of the best examples of how this uh, process would work is uh, the film Epstein versus Churchill. And it's a good example because it it has this within its, at its core, it has something that is true and then built around it is this um, artistic licence uh, that has been taken sometimes, but in a very, uh, a very harmless and gentle way. But ultimately, like what we're talking about is true. Um, there's telegrams in the archive uh, from Winston Churchill to Epstein, um, which are just uh, notes of, of no tremendous interest, like telegrams saying thank you for the present uh, on uh, Churchill and his wife's anniversary, that kind of thing. There's, be, there's these stories that you can read in a few of the biographies of Epstein that uh, Churchill complained quite a lot about um, the noise that came out of uh, Epstein's house because when Epstein moved into Hyde Park Gate, Churchill lived across the road. So for um, 20 years they were neighbours. Um, but Churchill apparently often complained about the, the noise that came out of the Epstein house, although they, they did get on quite well. That was, uh, he, he grumbled about that apparently. So while we were down there, uh, Bob and I were uh, touring all of Epstein's, uh, or some of Epstein's public sculptures, particularly the ones that were uh, quite um, controversial at their, in their time, and we went by the house in Hyde Park Gate, which is just behind the Royal Albert Hall, and uh, we took down a little puppet of Epstein with this film kind of in the back of our minds that we would do a very kind of uh, uh, very quick animation that kind of told this story in a very crude way, and I think it's uh, it worked really well, and I. I find it funny anyway. <laughs> Anyone else does. Epstein! How many times do I have to tell you about the bloody music? I didn't kick Hitler's ass just so I could have my retirement disturbed by a bunch of bloody artists! Well, we're having a party. <laughs> Why don't you come in and chill out, Churchill? We're having a great party inside and you can hang out with Frisky and my crazy kids and it's gonna be cool. You asked for it, Epstein! I warned you, but you pushed me too far this time. Why don't you try and scump this?